Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. You can find us on Facebook. In this short podcast we are going to take a look at an aspect of costing known as cost bookkeeping and we're going to look at what used to be called the integrated system. Bookkeeping for financial accounting records the transactions for the business as a whole and this is what you have met so far. Bookkeeping for cost accounting has a different purpose. In other words, we're looking at revenue and costs that can be attributed to products and activities. And we then have to reconcile the cost system accounts to the financial accounting system. And this can be done in one of two ways. Cost accounts are not concerned with drawings or capital or reserves or with assets other than inventory. But they do affect raw materials, work in progress and finished goods. So we get the data for cost accounts from the income accounts and the expenditure accounts. And of course there is an objective to all this and that is to charge the costs to the end products, either directly through jobs or indirectly using absorption systems. So remember then that cost accounts are not going to be affected by the receipts from trade receivables or payments to trade payables or to discounts or sales or purchases of fixed assets or dividends or shares. They're concerned mainly with the income and expenditure. There are two systems that are in use, the integrated system and the interlocking system. The integrating system is where all the information for financial and costing is kept in a single set of books and that's what this podcast will be looking at. There is however a second method called the interlocking system and that's where the books are divided into a financial ledger and a cost ledger and those will be looked at in our next podcast. So here's an example and we're going to use this example for the integrated system and for the interlocking system. We have an engineering company which is providing packaging solutions and we have information relating to the trial balance and the income statement for the trading year. So When we go through this, you'll find that what we're basically doing really is reconstructing accounts rather than actually entering data in the order that it would normally be put into. It may be easier to follow this almost sort of slide by slide, in which case if you visit parkbenchtutors.com there is a flash video for that purpose. So we have the trial balance and at the start of the year that will simply contain information about assets, uh, accumulated depreciation, cash and any reserves and shares. So we've got a very simple trial balance there that's for the start of the year and we have the income statement at the end of the year. This is what's happened during the year and you can see it's a profit made of 54,500 and what we're going to try and show you is how you would have derived that figure from cost accounting. You do need a little bit of information which is additional to that. That's the method of absorption which is 45% of direct labor to, for fixed overheads. Uh, therefore you also need to know other things um, such as the hours of labor and of course depreciation you need to know and how many units and what the sale price was. So the first step then we're going to transfer the balances from the opening trial balance as account entries. So we have ordinary shares credit of 150,000, we have reserves a credit of 25,000, we have fixed assets 167,000 as a debit, we have accumulated depreciation and we have the cash account and those will all balance that's our trial balance so all we've done is enter the trial balance now into the financial accounting system as we normally would have we're now going to update the double entry for depreciation that's taken place during the year so we are going to credit accumulated depreciation with 4,000 and of course we've got to debit and depreciation expense with 4,000. Now we're going to make entries for the materials purchased. We're going to assume that all the materials purchased have been paid for during the year. 
So that's our materials purchase debit of 40,000 and that will be a credit to payables but we've said that these have all been paid so there will be a debit to payable and a credit to cash and that accounts for our materials purchased. Now we're going to enter similar details for sales made assuming that all the receivables were re received in other words that all those who owed us money paid us money so we start the crediting the sales we would have debited receivables but then to receive the monies we would have credited receivables and debited the cash account right now let's look at the expenses that were incurred we incurred rent so we debit rent and credit the cash account uh, we have the manager's salary, we would debit the, the manager's salary account, credit the cash. We would debit the wages and credit cash. We would debit variable overhead and credit cash. So those are all our expenses. And you can see I've laid them all out there and highlighted all the credits now in the cash account okay now we have all the information there let's start to determine the fixed overheads I'm going to do this by transferring from the accounts for double entry so I get to transfer to fixed overhead the rent the salary and the depreciation Here we are I've transferred the rent credit the rent debit fixed overhead transfer the manager's salary credit the manager's salary debit fixed overhead and depreciation credit depreciation debit the fixed overhead now I need to transfer costs to work in progress so if I look at uh, the where I got to the variable overhead I get to transfer that by crediting the variable overhead I will credit wages and I will credit materials purchased and of course I need, need to debit all those to the work in progress account so that's all those double entries now if I look at the fixed overheads right that's all gone to work in progress 2500 6000 4000 there we are note that I've absorbed fixed overhead here at a particular rate namely at a rate of 45 percent for direct labor in other words 45 percent of two and a half thousand you also notice by the way that the fixed overhead account doesn't actually balance at the moment we'll come back to that in a minute I've got to transfer my work in progress to finished goods and then the finished goods to cost in sales. So there's my work in progress that all becomes finished goods, value of 88,250, which I transfer to finished goods and then you can see I'm going to transfer those to cost of sales and there we are, they're all transferred to cost of sales now. Now I've got to compile the profit and loss account and eventually of course I will have to transfer the profit to the reserves so I start off with the sales which have got to go to the profit and loss account so I've previously credited the sales for 144,000 so I'm going to debit the sales for the same amount and obviously credit the P&L account with fixed overheads note that I'm now going to come back and balance that account because I've got a figure of 1250 which is needed to balance and that of course represents under absorption of the fixed overhead so that under absorption of 1250 which is required to balance it will have to go to the profit and loss account and for the cost of sales for the, uh, we had 88250 so I'm going to credit that and debit the P&L account so there we are I've got those three figures in now I've got cost of sales I've got the under absorption figure and I've got the sales but of course the two figures don't balance at the moment the reason being that I haven't entered a figure for profit 
In order to make them balance, I need to have a figure of 54,500, and that of course represents my profit. So I transfer that to the reserves, I debit the profit and loss account, and I credit the reserves account. So my reserves, I had a brought forward figure of 25,000, and I've just increased it at the end of the year by 54,500 for the profit. I can check all of this by saying that, okay, all the accounts that don't have zero balances I've entered. Anything that has a zero balance I've ignored. So I have balances in shares, reserves, in assets, depreciation, in cash. And if I add those up, you will see that those are balanced. So if I'd done a trial balance at the end of the year, that's the information that I would have had. That ends this podcast, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors, narrated by David Hopcroft. You can find us on Facebook or you can visit us at parkbenchtutors.com and if you wish to sign up at parkbenchtutors.com you'll receive a playlist or access to the playlist and to a free course and to other resources as we develop them. Thank you for watching and listening. We wish you success in your studies.